Hello and welcome to episode 129 of Vokta Gaming. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and we are here with the first of this week's pro games. This is a best of three and it's gonna be sick. Introducing first, our Blue Terran, formerly from Team Prime, winner of the GSL Super Cup Tournament. It wasn't called Super Cup Tournament, it was just a Super Tournament. I'm getting confused with Japanese wrestling. Anyway, none of that matters. He is on team at the SCV Life. His name is TSL Polt. Opposing him today is our Red Zerg player. A favourite of the Europeans they have met once before. And it was exciting. And this is going to be even more exciting. Allow me to introduce to you from Team Millennium. His name is Stefano! Oh, I am excited today. I, By the way, guys, uh, sorry to ruin all uh, your images of me, but I hate Easter. Like, seriously hate it. Like, it is just awful because I have to work Easter eggs at work nine hours a day, and that is just crap. But I am home now, and I am going to watch Polt play Stefano. Stefano, of course, the European Zerg player. He is exciting. He's been doing so many good things lately in the world of StarCraft 2. As we see here, he is going to 16 hatch. Oh, yes, he is going to 16 hatch. He better 16 hatch. If he doesn't, I will cry. There we go. So a hatch up at 16, that is fine. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Polk, meanwhile, is just doing the normal barracks opening. The question is... Will he expand behind it? Will he drop a bunker? Will he drop a second barracks? So many ways Terran can go in the opening. It's really, really exciting. I have a feeling I was in the middle of saying something there and then completely forgot it. But that's fine. That was it. Uh, Millennium, uh, the team Stefano is a part of, is, of course, a French team. Very, very... Uh, I was about to say very, very good. Not very, very good, but a decent team. They have players who, uh, while they don't win uh, huge ranking events, they do. <coughs> excuse me. They do place well. They always have good showings. People like Stefano. Players like Lelouch. I believe Prodigy was for a while on that. And oh, Polt is bunker rushing. Polt, you devious, devious devil. This should not finish off Stefano in any way, shape or form. Here he is, pulling the drones down now, attacking the bunker. Now the question is, how much damage can this marine do? As a Terran versus a fast expanding Zerg, you should always, always bunker rush. It is just a simple fact. At the very least, you end up even at the end of it. Because they've lost mining time. And you force the, uh, the Zerg player to make Zerglings. Simple as that. Right now... The Zerg player wants to make drones. That is what he wants to do. He wants to get his economy up and advance into the mid game. What you are doing by bunker rushing is forcing him to make defensive units instead of those drones and keeping his economy behind yours while you expand. Or not necessarily behind, but level with yours while you expand, which is exactly what Polt is doing. Polt, by the way, very, very strong Terran player. He is, of course, South Korean which instantly makes him absolutely fantastic at life, as well as StarCraft 2. But Stefano is going to be a tough opponent for him. It would not surprise me to see this go to a Game 3. Now, I did watch the event this is from. However, I did not see the games between Polt and Stefano. I was occupied uh, with watching a... Uh, <laughs> a bronze uh, Zerg player at the time... Uh, lose to one base Archon, Void Ray, Zella, everything else, Cannon Rush. Uh, it was ridiculous. It was so much fun to watch. And I completely forgot to watch Polk vs. Stefano. And that's why I'm doing these replays now. Because this is going to be awesome. And I didn't get to see it. So now you all get to see it as well. I apologise, by the way, for those of you who have seen this game. I know there will be people who watch this channel that have seen it. And this is a very nice Hellion push, by the way. Uh, I do want to talk about this a bit right now. Polt is doing the uh, the reactor Hellion opening, and which is so good against Zerg, uh, because again, you force them to make links, 
But even more importantly than that, you gain map control. As you're getting this expansion up at home, the Zerg player cannot push out, he cannot leave his base. Because he knows those Hellions will get in and destroy everything. Now, interestingly, the Queen at home there... Oh, but Roaches are out now. Roaches on the way. Even more joining them. So the Hellion push is stopped. Meanwhile, they will have map control because they are faster than Roaches. But again, you force that out of Stefano. You force him to make Roaches instead of just drones. And now you've got a ton of Hellions. You've got an orbital command up. Interestingly, not landing it out there now. Because he knows that there's a ton of Zerglings out and a ton of Roaches on the way. This is going to be a nice pushback from Stefano here. Uh, Holt is running the Hellions fast. Try to pick off as many Zerglings as possible. Because again, the longer you delay the attack, the more time you have to build your defences. I'm going to go back into Holt's base now. So I can just talk through exactly what he's adding. He's adding more barracks uh, to counter. That's going to get some Marauders out to counter the Roaches. Along with reactor barracks there. Using the, uh, the factory's old reactor. Also getting a, a reactor there. That should be for the starport, as far as I'm aware. These two should switch the moment Holt has the time to do that. Right now, he is focused on holding this attack off. Stim is about to finish. The minute Stim finishes, this attack is finished. That was nice taking down the supply depot, though. SCV is not able to repair in time. Stim is done, but these units are not stimming. And right now, he's not making anything. Holt is entirely focused on holding off this attack. He will do it. Units are being made now that will stop this out. And finally, Polt is able to switch these. This means double medevacs at the time. And he can finally go and land this command center. But Stefano, oh Stefano. He is getting a third hatchery up. That is perfect timing there. That is just what you want to do. You want to pressure his base and then drop an expansion. Because you know the Terran player is in no way going over there. Polt is responding by building his third command center himself. A very wise move to do. You're going to know um, at this level, at this level of pro play, you should know, even without seeing it, that the Zerg has just taken a third base. That is just what a good Zerg player does. And now we see combat shields are on the way for those Marines. Stefano has a force of entirely speedlings out on the map now, not even producing any more roaches, because he feels comfortable that Holt is right now stuck in his base. So all his money uh, is going towards just a few speedlings to pressure with and scout for a third. Very nicely done, Stefano. I do like to see that. He's also getting his upgrade Zerg when they attack to level 1. Zerg ground carapace level 1 too. So that is pretty much speedling upgrades. Of course, the Roach will benefit from the carapace, from the armor upgrade as well. Should he choose to go into mass Roach production. As it is, though, just producing more and more Zerglings. And teching up to the lair in the base. Now, the question is, will we see a Spire? Will we see Infestors? Uh, you, you can go so many ways. You can go Mutaling Bling. Uh, of course, it does not look like he's going out. I'm just going to check, make sure he hasn't got a Baneling Nest. Uh, no, he hasn't. He does have double Evo Chambers, however. And he's dropping a Macro Hatch for his fourth. Excellent, excellent work. That's going to allow him to keep up his production in the face of all this money he is. Gaining from being on three base. Now, Paul, this is what I was talking about before, by the way. Uh, in yesterday's game. Oh, hang on, never mind. Because Paul is stimming in here now. But, oh, that is a ton of feelings. Get a good surround here. And these medevacs are going to have to pick up. Now, that was a misclick with the Queen. Or not a misclick, but I would have liked to have seen him try to focus down the medevacs with the Queen. Because, of course, it stops that lift from happening. As it is, though, really nice defense from Stefano. Keeps that third base alive very, very well. Notice how he has not spread his creep at all this game. That is perhaps the one way I can criticize him. But right now, it does not matter a great deal because he is only using the speedling force. They can move around the map so fast anyway. It is not the hugest of deals. Tries to pressure the front, but of course, the supply depot wall, along with siege tanks, will stop that. Siege mode not finished yet. In fact, uh, is only halfway done, but Stefano is not to know that yet. Now he's been keeping this force of speedlings here to watch for the third base. The fact that Polt has pushed up here will tell him that the third base is done. The orbital command is obviously ready, but has not been able to move there just yet. Now these Zergans are going to get picked up here. Very nice move by Polt there to uh, to catch them in a pincer. But look at this, Stefano getting a fourth base up. 
I'm not too sure about this timing because Paul has started to catch up in supply now and all Stefano has are these Zerglings. They are at 1-1, but plus one weapons is also on the way for Paul. So I'm not 100% sure of that right now. Meanwhile, back in Paul's space, we see he's adding three more barracks. He's also adding an armory that I cannot find as of yet. Adding a second factory, here goes the armory and another eBay. So you've got to focus heavily on those upgrades. Also perhaps Thor's to count out any muters he may see. But there aren't muters. What there are is, if I find it, there we go, infestation pits. So infestors on the way to counter the bio. Those fungals are going to be sick. Huge speedling running, uh, speedling groups rather, running about on the map right now for Stefano. Really, really making good use of that map control. I just want to make sure he knows this third base is here. He does not yet know this third base is here. But the speedlings will come in and attack and they will see it. Nice pullback from Stefano there. So he knows that base is there now. And the question is, how does he attack it? Speedlings will no longer be enough because there are siege tanks for siege mode. They will all die a quick, fiery and incredibly painful death. So, plus two, plus two, halfway, uh, just over halfway done. The uh, plus two armor is about to finish. He's taking up all the way to a hive. Wow, that is a pretty quick hive. At uh, 16 minutes, that uh, just over 16 minutes, about 17 minutes that will finish. We have vehicle weapons level one on the way, along with infantry armor and infantry weapons level two for Pult. So those sea tanks are really going to start to deal the hurt out very shortly. So the question is, what does Polt do? Uh, what does Stefano rather do now? Right now, still just making speedlings and infestors. Uh, he is going to finish that hive tech. I'm really not sure. I'd like to see him go into mute play, perhaps into broodlords. Broodlords, of course, so so nice at the end of a game. But Polt now stimming in with a small drop here. Sees the infestor tech, so he knows it's there. Picks up and will escape. Very nicely done. Now, this is nice, actually. This is something I want to comment on just quickly. Stefano, of course, will see all of this by keeping the Overlord there. And he will not be seen because he's on that high ground. This is really nice from the Zerg player. Uh, abusing the map geography like that is so, so good. I like to see more of that. Holy crap, that is a ton of speedlings. How many speedlings? 166 speedlings right now out on the map. And the thing about that is, while that is a huge force of speedlings, that will die in about four tank shots. That is ridiculous. See how they all clump up together as they move there. So I'd really like to see where he's going. Okay, he's going into Ultralisk. Okay, so Stefano wants to lose this game. That is basically what Stefano is saying right now. He wants to lose this game by making Ultralisks. Uh, okay, not a huge fan of that. Ultralisk, not so bad. Oh, but this is a nice catch. If only he'd gone with all of his speedlings before the tanks had sieged up, he'd have lost every single tank there. That would have been devastating for Paul. As it is, those tanks survive. We do have plus three, plus three on the way for Stefano. Also getting the uh, Adrenal Glands upgrade as well. Running past with the speedlings, that's not a good choice. They will all die, or a lot of them die in fact. And they walk into siege tanks unseized though. So perhaps a tank kill here, we'll get one. That's not of too much consequence for Polt. It does delay the push slightly, but Polt now drops his fourth command. So now Polt here in a commanding position. We have three Ultralists on the way, but that's not going to be enough. Like, they're going to melt in the face of this. Stefano just... Mm, I feel falling at the final hurdle here. His unit composition is terrible right now. Way too many speedlings uh, that will just melt two concerted tank fire and here we see the slow slow tank push up the ramp into the fourth of Stefano. Stefano's got speedings coming from behind but they will get hit by this tank splash. They will take out one tank and a few bio units attacking from all angles now trying to get in trying to do damage but look at the supply go down for Stefano already dropping to below 150 now just getting back up. Holtlow still on 188. Holt man so, so good. Decent fungal there. But of course that force was put forward to bait the fungals out. And they will run out. Seize the ultralisk. But they will die to the bio very, very quickly. 
Marauders versus Ultralist is an easy way to kill Ultras. One does take some tank splash there as well. I'm really not sure what Stefano can do to hold this. He's making four more Ultras right now. But this is going to be tough, tough, tough to keep this fourth base. He does have Burrowed for the Infestors, of course. So they do Burrow forward. The question is, okay, they're going to drop Infested Terrans on everything. Using the Tank Splash to take down one of Holt's own tanks. But I'm sorry, these Ultras are just going to die here. Everything is far too spread out for Colt. Really, really nice positioning for him. These Ultras are dead. The, too much bio, too many tanks. Stefano now down to 135 supply. He needs to keep that production up. He has the money, but he just does not have the production. He just he has not been hitting his lava injects perfectly, unfortunately. He's trying to make stuff as fast as he can. 28 more zervings in production. Trying to get up this fourth base now, but it's behind the fourth of Holt. So Holt has the advantage there as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Now Stefano is using these ultras to tank nicely. But I'm just not sure it's enough. He is not killing enough of Polk's units here. And Polk can continue to pressure the fourth base of Stefano. Look at the amount of units he is rallying forward. Okay, once all this reaches, Stefano is going to lose that fourth base of his. We have two more command centers up now for Polk. Using uh, the orbital command there for mules and potentially scans should he need it to see uh, the borrowed infestors. Finally, the fifth base of Stefano will finish. But again, I'm just not sure it's enough. Hulk for me is in a very strong position. Stefano even trying to get an additional base up, but he's going to lose this base here. And so the original fourth of Stefano's dies. He's countering with the units. In fact, it looks like he's taking his entire army for a counterattack. No, hesitates. Waiting perhaps to see this land and then attack it. But of course, he can just keep it lifted. So long as Poe is watching. <coughs> and now, very, very late, after he's been scanned, Stefano decides to go in for an attack on the rear of Poe's main army. Rallying more and more units down. It looks like he will take this out from Poe. But Polt is sending in more units to reinforce. Bio here taking down the speedlings. But a very nice fungal there. Forces Polt to retreat. Okay. He needs to lift this base. Stefano now actually. In quite a nice position. He's managed to keep this base up. He's getting this base up as well. And he's forcing Polt back. Plus three vehicle weapons by the way. About to finish. Plus three infantry armour as well on the way. He's already at plus three weapons. So the Terran army is hitting incredibly hard right now. But Stefano has the supply lead. The debris in the middle is taken down. Holt lands his command center. Morphing it to a planetary fortress for that extra defense. So he can uh, feel a bit better about leaving it mostly undefended. Nice tank splash there. Get some good hits off on the Zerglings. And the Ultras. Oh, even picks up an Infester. Can he pick up a second one? No. A drop is going on up here as well. Not doing a great deal. But if he pushes on into the main, he might. There's only some speedlings here. He does have a few spine crawlers though. The question is really what Stefano decides to do here. Okay. Bringing a lot of speedlings home to defend against this actually. And he will stop this drop from doing a great deal of damage. But oh! Polt is in Stefano's expansion. That dies so, so quickly. Meanwhile, Polt trying to land this, but there is a burrowed Zergling there, stopping that from happening. But Polt has taken down that base. Stefano trying to re-expand to his original fourth location. And he's going to try and take down this planetary. Should be able to do it. He has a huge amount of army here. That planetary dies so quickly. But it does get a few kills off on Zerglings. That's not going to matter to Stefano. He can remake Speedlings dead, dead easily. Now what I'm seeing from him is no change in the army composition. I'd expected perhaps a tech switch when he got the chance. But uh, right now he hasn't. He's just desperately trying to get these bases up. And as such, Pulp knows exactly what he's facing. 
in every situation and has so many mills, so many scams. Look at this. Another command center being built. Oh my word. Scams go down. He sees everything that's going on. The infestors cannot borrow to escape. They do get some good fungus off though. Again, nice spread from Pulp. Forcing the units into tank range. Once again, the ultras are dying to the bio, but there isn't as much bio here as before. Can they get into these tanks? If they can, they can do a huge amount of damage. Infested turns are actually getting in the way uh, somewhat, meaning the ultras do not attack as efficiently as they could and will all die. The last one goes down and there's just infesters and infested terrans left. But that was a nice attack for Stefano. He can remake technically faster than Pulp can, but he doesn't have the bank. He's remaking six infestors right now and eight servants, not making any more ultras than what is currently on the field, which is in fact absolutely none. So Pulp now continuing to push as Stefano's supply dwindles. He doesn't have the money, he hasn't got the mining up anymore against Pulp, whose mining is incredible right now. The only thing is he still hasn't been able to land this base. I don't know if he's just not looked or uh, if he's just focusing solely on this attack. Two more ultras on the way, 22 more speedlings. But it looks like this hatchery will go down. Nope, again, ah, oh, here comes extra bio. Tanks moving in a range as well. See you later, hatchery. Stefano now being slowly pushed back and back on daybreak. He is in a ton of trouble at this point. He needs to do something to defend, but now he's at the point where he doesn't have the money to engage inefficiently anymore. Holt is the one who can engage inefficiently, knowing he has the bank, knowing he has the production structures to continue against this. Look at this, even getting Terran vehicle armor now. The vehicle plating upgrade. That is a sure sign that a Terran is miles ahead in the game. That he has so much money to spend just on upgrading the armor of his tanks. Just one ultra here to tank damage. It is already at half health. The second one is on the way though. But the first dies. There are infestors here. Nice fungus going off, I will say. But the bio again is forcing Stefano to retreat. And right now he's nearly at half the supply of pole. Creep Tomb is being killed. This, uh, this fourth base is going down, definitely. Sorry, Stefano. Better luck in game two. Holt has got this game in the bag. The investors come in, dropping some more fungals, doing everything they can, but he is below half of the supply now. Losing drones left, right and centre. Stefano with the congrats, and there we go! Polk goes one game up in this series. Wow! I told you it was going to be good. I am so glad I decided to do these replays. I decided to actually watch these games. Oh, God! Anyway, uh, some quick announcements to make before I am done here. First up, of course, you can find me, as always, on my normal channel. You're probably watching this video on it, but you can also find me now over at Temple Hub. The videos will be going up later. They will always, always air first on my channel because I do not have upload privileges to Temple Hub. And even if I did, my channel comes first. But the Temple Hub guys, guys are really, really awesome. Go over check it out, www.youtube.com forward slash Temple Hub. Uh, there's tons and tons of gaming videos on there. If you are interested in gaming outside of the world of StarCraft 2, go, go check it out. It's, uh, there's a lot of FPS stuff on there at the moment. There's some RPG bits. And as well as that, there's a few graphic stuff as well. And of course, you can also check me out over at www.scforum.eu. I hang out on those forums. Please, please join it. It'd be awesome to get an even bigger community on those forums. And of course, if you join, you can get your replays casted on Vokta Gaming every Tuesday when I do the SC Forum replay. One last announcement. This Sunday, I will be in Manchester at the Kyoto Lounge Bar opposite the Manchester Metropolitan University for the finals of IPL4. It's going to be sweet. I am bar crafting like a mofo. I am excited for that. I am excited for tomorrow. I'm excited for the rest of this week. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all again.